know the Chinese haven't rung yet. That's because I want to go through a couple of things that are a little bit different in this order of worship today. Last Sunday, we started using this setting one from the new hymnal, but we didn't have a Holy Communion last Sunday. So I just wanted to point out a couple of things and practice one thing before we uh, begin the service. Now, turn to pages three and four. If you remember last Sunday, we went through those opening sung responses. There are five of them. The first, third, and fifth are the same notes. The second and the fourth are the same notes. You might recall that from last Sunday. Turn to page eight. Page eight at the bottom, the gospel acclamation will be sung for you. But at the end of worship today, we're going to sing it together because we'll sing it together next Sunday. Turn to page 11, the very top of the page, the first line there on page 11 of the Nicene Creed. In the 1941 hymnal, we say, and became man, right? Some of you remember that. In the 93 hymnal, we said, became fully human. Don't, don't mess it up. In this new hymnal, we say, truly human. It's a little bit different. Then lastly, the, la the final thing I want to point out, turn to page 13. The beginning of the sacrament portion of the order of worship. I'm going to speak the part. The organist is going to play your part, and then we'll all all four of them, and then we'll go back and do them once again. Actually, there are three of them. So, the Lord be with you. No problem there. That one's familiar. The next one. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To give him thanks and praise. Those are all eighth notes. All right, let's, let's sing them now. I'll speak my part, you will sing your part. The Lord be with you. That's our inward bent by nature, to glorify ourselves, to think only of ourselves. But Christ has created you and me to be new creatures, to be able to truly love others as he loves us. That's the focus of our worship this morning. May the Holy Spirit empower you to love one another as you worship your Savior, Jesus Christ. A good morning and welcome to all of you. 
If you're using the hymnal, today's order of worship begins on page 154. We join now with the opening hymn number 730. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Today's first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 11. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of, of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles God has granted repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Today's psalm of the day is number 145. Listen as the organist plays an introduction, and then we'll join together in singing the refrain and the verses of the psalm.
chapter 13. This reading will serve as our sermon text later. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels who do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in the mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen as the gospel acclamation is sung for you.
loved one another. The gratifying grace of God the Father, the lavish love of God the Son, and the comforting communion of God the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. In the name of our risen and ascended Lord Jesus, dear Christian friends. The story is told of a, of a boy going off to summer camp for a week. It was the first time he would be away from his parents for an extended period of time. And his parents knew that he would face some unchristian influences there during that week away from them. And so, among their parting words, they told him, make sure you act like the child we raised you to be. Child of God. A week later, his parents showed up to pick him up from camp. And on their way home, they asked him, so, was it easy living like a child of God or not? And he answered, oh, it was easy. They didn't even know I was a Christian. Not the answer his parents were looking for. After Jesus ascended into heaven, his followers began living their Christian lives. And they faced trouble and persecution from those who were not Christians. And those who were not Christians, though, noticed how Christians treated one another. And they were led to explain, see how they love one another. They were known by their love for each other. And in doing so, they were displaying the power of the risen Lord Jesus. You see, the modus operandi of people, our natural inclination, is to say and do things that will serve ourselves, will be to our advantage, will keep us on top. Our modus operandi by nature is not sacrificing of ourselves to serve and help others. And yet that's exactly what the Lord Jesus encourages and even commands his believers to do, to love one another. To love even those who are your enemies, those who hate you. Now where in the world are we going to get the power to do that? It comes from the risen Lord Jesus. The power of the risen Lord Jesus lives in you and me. Jesus not only gives us the example to live by, he gives us the power to accomplish it. This morning's sermon text is probably familiar to you. You've heard it countless times at weddings. Paul wrote these words, however, not merely for Christians who are contemplating or entering into marriage. He wrote them for all Christians of all time. Let's examine these words once again. And do so asking ourselves, how will others see your Christianity? As we ponder these words, may the Holy Spirit fill us with his wisdom and empower us as God's people to love one another. I'm sure you've noticed what an uncanny ability Satan has to take blessings from God and turn them into instruments for sin and evil. Take the internet, for example. We can't imagine living our lives without the internet for a day. It's a tremendous blessing to us. It helps us in so many ways, but you've also recognized, you also know, the ways in which some people have used the internet to hurt other people, to commit crimes, to spread falsehood and hatred, a tremendous blessing from God. And Satan uses it for evil purposes. This morning's sermon text speaks about using the gifts God has given us. The wider context is necessary for you, for you here to understand what Paul is writing. In the early Christian church, the Holy Spirit gave gifts, special gifts, to Christians. And among the congregations, it would be hard to find one more blessed with gifts than the Corinthian Christians were. They had tremendous spiritual gifts. In the previous chapter, Paul mentioned those gifts and how the, the Corinthians were to use them. The problem, however, that the Corinthians were facing is that they were misusing these blessings from God. Another example of Satan causing people to take a blessing from God and turn it into something sinful. They were misusing their gifts. They were using them to their own advantage and not to the advantage of others. 
Paul says in the opening words of our text, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. The Corinthian Christians possess some special, tremendous spiritual gifts. Paul talks about one of them, speaking in tongues, languages they had never studied before. He talks about the gift of prophecy, that is the ability to speak God's word to other people. He talks about the gift of being charitable towards others. So what was the problem with these gifts? Again, the Philippians were using these gifts to call attention to themselves. It was all about how they were using these gifts and not about the people to whom God had get, sent them, had placed them there among their midst in this Corinthian congregation to help. What's more, they placed a higher value on some gifts than others. Again, they were glorifying themselves with the gifts that they had instead of using them to help other people. And what it all led to was envy. There were gifted Christians among the Corinthians, but since they didn't have the gifts that were valued by others, they were led to envy those people and their gifts. And subsequently, they didn't use the gifts God had given them to help other people. The whole situation was deplorable. So what we have to ask ourselves is, what do others see when they look at you as a Christian? Is it possible at times that they see you using your Christian gifts only to bring glory to yourself? It's possible. In fact, it's likely. When they see you displaying your life as a Christian, isn't it our highest goal for them to see Christ? And that's exactly where Paul now goes with this text. Paul talks about love here in our text. The Greek word that Paul used for love is that highest form of love. There are three words for love in the Greek, and this is the highest one. Let's, uh, let's talk about that for a minute. The Greek word here means that this is a love which understands the object completely, the person that is being loved. And it's combined with a corresponding action or good purpose. Let's unpack that a minute. God's kind of love, this highest kind of love, knows you exactly, warts and all. He knows even the sordid things that no one else knows, and yet he loves you. And he combines that love with a corresponding action or purpose. Our God wants to spend eternity with you, but that's not possible because of sin. So God did something about it. Here's the action. He sacrificed his son because he loves you so much in order to win your forgiveness and your eternal life with him. It's a love which knows you and which does something to help you. That's the kind of love God is calling on us to show to one another. But just what does that look like? You see, it's not just an emotion. It's an activity. Listen to this rendition of the middle verses of our text. Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not boast. Jesus is not proud. Jesus does not dishonor others. Jesus is not self-seeking. Jesus is not easily angered. Jesus keeps no record of wrongs. Jesus does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Jesus always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres. Again, the emphasis on this kind of love is not as an emotion, but as an activity. It's the activity that Jesus carried out for us in doing his work of redemption, perfectly loving others, even those who hated him, those who crucified him. He always displayed that kind of love. So how will others see your Christianity? Not by love's absence, but by love's presence in the way that you live your life. And they'll see it permanently. Paul talks about the permanence of Christian love. 
He says, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Paul admits that some of the gifts of the Spirit fade away. He talks about the gift of tongues that was common in the early church. Now it has faded away. He speaks, though, about the gift of prophecy fading away. In what way? How? When? Well, maybe soon. Prophecy is to speak the word of God to other people. The need for prophecy will continue only as long as this world exists. Once the Lord Jesus returns, the need for prophecy will cease. The gifts God has given to you and to me, so many of them will cease the need for them anyway. But then Paul talks about the permanence of three of the gifts, faith, hope, and love. They'll never fade away. How will faith, hope, and love never fade away? Well, in heaven, you'll have a perfect trust, a trust that never doubts. And yet, in heaven, you'll have a perfect hope, a hope that never gets discouraged or despairs. In heaven, you'll have a perfect love, a love which never takes advantage of other people and you're never taken advantage of. But then Paul closes with these words. Faith, hope, and love remain, but the greatest of these is love. Why would Paul call the gift of love the greatest? Bible commentators have been puzzled for centuries. But in my mind, calling the greatest gift love is because God himself, in his word, says God is love. Of all the gifts that God can give to a Christian, love is the greatest because it's the most godlike. How will others see your Christianity in the gift of love that God has given to you and that you show to others? A love that will never die. A love that is eternal. It's been said that this chapter of the Bible, the words that are here before us this morning, are among the most, some of the most beautiful words in all of Scripture. And I agree. But when you look at them, when you ponder them, when you consider what your God is asking of you, they also are some of the most indicting words in all of Scripture. Love is patient. I'm impatient every day of my life. Love is kind. Love keeps no record of wrongs. That's what I do. That's what I want to do by nature. Who can possibly do what our God is asking of us here? Well, we can't, not perfectly. Only one did, your Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what his love is all about. He came to do what we can never do, to love each other perfectly. And then he sacrificed himself because he loves you so deeply in order to wash all your sins away. And by his resurrection now, he gives us the power to love others. How will others see your Christianity in the way that you love others? May others see that love in us all our days. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed, pages 10 and 11 of your worship folder. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now join together in the prayer of the church. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his work through the means of grace. Plant your word in our hearts and cause it to produce faith in our lives. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of your truth throughout the world. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the word and in all godly walks of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom that they may promote justice and hinder evil. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who devote themselves to any useful task. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Grant them your love and take them into your tender care. Heavenly Father, you are the source of life, wisdom, and all good things. Look with favor on all mothers who have given life to their children and who nurture them with loving concern and faithful instruction. May their children honor them and call them blessed. When they become weary, sustain them with physical and spiritual rest. Hear us for the sake of your son Jesus, who cared for his earthly mother and in whom you were well pleased. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Keep us in the true faith and bring us at last to the joys of heaven. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the gathering of the offering.
help the heathen be increased from day to day as we plead in true compassion and for their conversion, pray. For the many faithful workers, for the gospel they proclaim, let us all be cheerful givers to the glory of your name. Amen. Please stand for the sacrament portion of the order of worship. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his willing sacrifice on the cross took away the sins of the world, and by his glorious resurrection restored life everlasting. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
favor for the Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sin. Take that greater body and more for the Savior Jesus Christ. This is the true blood. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take that greater body and more for the Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins. This is the true body and more for the Savior Jesus Christ. Take that greater body and more for the Savior Jesus Christ. This is the true blood. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take that greater body and more for the Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
could stay. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death unto he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the closing hymn.
First of all, thanks to all of you for joining me this morning as we worship the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's my prayer that the power of the love of Christ goes with you in the week ahead as you live as his children, uh, living in love toward others. If you're a visitor, it's been a special pleasure for me to share that message with you this morning. If you have some questions about resurrection, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, we have fellowship refreshments available. Please uh, enter into the fellowship hall for got a few minutes and enjoy them with your fellow Christians. Uh, on your way through the narthex and into the fellowship hall, if you'd like one of the old hymnals, you'd like five of the old hymnals, take them along with you. They're there. You take them home, as many as you'd like. I've got one more. Oh, yes. Uh, our congregation supports a mission, a Wells mission in Mansfield, Ohio. And I got some more information on that mission uh, this last week when I met uh, the Risen Savior's pastor at conference. He said the offering that we gave to them this quarter, they used to go above and beyond what they were planning to do. And one of the ways they did that was by hiring some digital presence and some online presence in order to uh, advertise the things that they have coming. So they've got a professional look and a professional a theme to them. It's all because of the offerings that you uh, supply to them. So your mission dollars at work. Those are the announcements. Mothers, have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.